Okay, so this video is on stomatal opening and closing. Um, remembering that this is a bit in the sort of gas exchange bit, but it's also an adaptation to life on land. So stomata, we remember, are for the carbon dioxide to get in to the air spaces so that it can diffuse to the gas exchange surface and to allow oxygen to diffuse from the gas exchange surface into the air spaces and out of the leaf. Um, and the sort of downside is that water can leave as well. And water is something that the plant doesn't want to lose because it's got limited availability on land. So I'm just going to draw a quick picture of um, some open guard cells and then we'll do sort of how they get there. So, remember I said they were kind of banana shaped? Obviously they're joined together, top and bottom. I'm trying to make these even and they won't necessarily happen that way. Um, and like all plant cells, they've got a cell wall and in Stomata, it's, the guard cells are different in that the cell wall next to that hole is very much thicker so there are lots of extra layers of cellulose now it's not that they alter at any point they are just made with a much thicker cell wall just next to where the two cells are going to join together so we call this the inner cell wall so the inner inner wall is thicker and the outer wall is therefore thinner. Now we know that it's pretty inelastic um, and so the thicker it is the, the less elastic it is, the less stretchy it is. So to make this happen these cells um, need to be full of water, they need to be turgid so this means, what turgid means is full of water. So how does we make a cell full of water? Well, osmosis, obviously. But water won't move without moving from a higher water potential to a lower water potential. So really the stomatal opening story is about making the water potential inside the cytoplasm of the guard cell very much lower. Now, guard cells are unusual in that, uh, for epidermal cells, in that they have chloroplasts. And bizarrely, we always associate chloroplasts with making sugar, but as a sort of, you know, during that process, they also generate ATP. And they've got mitochondria to generate ATP too, of course. So, our stomatal opening and closing story starts with potassium ions being actively transported, active transport into the cells. Now that's important because hundreds of times have I read in exam scripts uh, potassium ions are actively transported into the stomata. This is a hole. You can't transport anything into it things can pass through it like an open doorway but you can't transport anything into it. So potassium ions obviously these are a solute and therefore they lower the water potential. At the same time we've also got reactions going on inside the guard cells. So here we've got starch converted to malate. Now what's the thing that we know about starch and storage? We know that starch is insoluble. I'm just going to describe it as osmotically inert. 
because of that it's not a solute so it's not going to lower water potential but malate is an ion and it's a solute so as the starch is made into malate it's going to lower the water potential of the cells so here we are on our way to being turgid so in our cells we have got potassium ions and we've got malate and a low water potential and in the epidermal cells surrounding so remember that we've got you know, there are other cells around here look at the little diagram these are the cells, these are epidermal cells and those epidermal cells have a higher water potential so water is going to move in by osmosis so when you're describing, you know, wording so important, active transport into the cells lowers the water potential, starch to malate lowers the water potential, water enters. Don't just talk about water entering, talk about osmosis, by osmosis, from a high water potential to a low water potential. Cells get turgid then, and when they're turgid, they bend open. Why do they bend? Because the outer wall stretches more than the thickened inner wall. Remembering it doesn't make the wall thicker, it just, it is thicker. Um, so, these sort of, so this happens uh, during the daytime. So if you sort of did a little graph of stomatal opening with time along here and a degree of openness you'll often see that called stomatal aperture. An aperture is a hole and it's how big that hole is. And we started at midnight and we're going to um, and we're going to um, midnight at that side and 12 o'clock. Now you don't need your stomata open during the day. So they're going to be short at night little aperture. When the light comes on in the morning they're going to open. You might see a slight dip and then they're going to close that they're shut again at night. So why close at night? This is to reduce water loss. And why at night when there's no light? Therefore, no photosynthesis. And no need for carbon dioxide. So you might as well have them shut then. So why this dip in the middle? This might be uh, when it's hotter and therefore water loss would be faster. And again, that's just to sort of conserve water, really. So we often see this little dip. 
cloudy days they might not open quite as far because they need light to in order to be able to open and photosynthesis. So the kind of opposite, you also need the opposite story. So of course at night these are going to close. So remember that active transport we're doing low to high. So we're going to go high to low so it'll be facilitated diffusion out. We're going to convert our malate back to starch from its osmotically active form to its osmotically inert form. The water potential of the cells will then raise It'll go above that of the epidermal cells, water will leave by osmosis and these cells, the opposite of turgid is flaccid and when they're flaccid they just kind of collapse together. So if I just do a little quick diagram here of some flaccid guard cells. I'm just trying to draw my cell wall on. So you know, it hasn't changed. Um, the cell wall is still thicker next to where the opening would appear. Still thinner around the outside. But now the cells have sort of collapsed together and we describe those as being flaccid. Flaccid sort of means floppy, if you like. Okay, I hope that helps. Now you do need to, I think, write this out as a sequence. Uh, write it out in a paragraph check your answer. It's been asked a lot of times, you should be able to find a mark scheme, no problem whatsoever. Check that you've got the order right, that you've got your causes and effects right, you know that these are causing the lowering of, osm of the water potential, that lowering is causing water to enter. So get it into some sort of order, have a little bit of a practice with it.